Hi, how you doing? I'm Seth with Air Theater Designs, and we're here today to talk about the amazing, and we don't know if they're amazing yet, we'll find out if we demo them, but the amazing Martin Logan XTF100 Tower Speakers. So we did a review a little bit while ago. Pause for effect. This was on the Martin Logan B100 bookshelf speakers. We thought these things were great. They had fantastic instrumentation, especially with uh, drums, wind instruments, strings. Uh, they sound really, really good. They are our favorite bookshelf under about two grand a pair to date. And uh, these are those things on steroids. So we're gonna talk about the technology behind the XTF 100s. We'll talk about our listening session and what we heard and the good and the bad. And then we'll come up with a conclusion and let you know if they're for us and if they are for you. So um, let's get right to it. First, we're going to start with their tweeter. They've got a thing that's called a folded motion XT tweeter. It's a 2.4 by 1.25 dealio here. Folded motion refers to their material where it looks like it's this big, but it's, ooh, it's big. So it's this folded piece of material. It's got diodes, it's got circuits, it's sandwiched between some heavy duty magnets. Long and short of it is, one, it's incredibly light, so it's very responsive. So you get clear sound when a speaker is really responsive and responds quickly, as opposed to one that doesn't. Also, because it's folded, small, big, small, big, it gives you about 10 times the surface material that you have with a conventional one inch tweeter. So more material, uh, being able to move faster makes it more efficient, which is a good thing. Um, and then this also has what's called controlled dispersion. So you take your regular dome tweeter, regular dome tweeter, you get virtually 180 degrees of dispersion. Problem with that is if you have a lot of reflective surfaces, that dispersion uh, can cause reflections, which cause bouncing sound waves, which make you go, hey, what did the guy say? Because you're hearing distortion. With these things, and the specs actually show it both ways. They show it 80 by 30 and 90 by 45. I'm gonna go with the 90 by 45. By having that focused dispersion, you get less of that bounce back from other items in the room. So it, uh, it, it helps to give you clearer sound. And especially if you've got rooms with lots of glass, tile, rock, those kind of things, uh, this is a great design. You've got a six and a half inch Kevlar enforced mid-range. So good if somebody starts shooting bullets at your speaker, it will be fine. But also uh, Kevlar is a great material because it's very strong, um, but it also absorbs ring or dampens ring. So you don't want ring in any sort of mid-range or any sort of speaker because that gives you a bit of distortion. It also gives you a little bit of a harsh sound. So you might go, hmm, getting tired of listening to these things a little while. Uh, you don't get that typically with Kevlar, so that's a good thing. Then down below, you've got three six and a half inch aluminum drivers. Aluminum is a good driver for a conventional bass driver. A bunch of different speaker manufacturers use them. Um, it's very uniform, so you don't have a lot of lumps and bumps, which cause issues with sound. Um, it's very light, um, but also it's, it's stiff, so you don't have where it flexes much, which is what you want in a bass driver. So I think that's a good material. You got uh, 74 pounds, so don't go dropping the thing on your foot. And then you've got, I don't know if you can see it from there, but these kind of, they call these flex feet, which for your spikes, because again, I don't know if you can really see them from there, with your spikes, um, you're able to just adjust it on the fly as opposed to turning the speaker over to do it. Also, they don't have ridiculously sharp points on the end that many speaker spikes do, which can literally punch right through your foot or scratch up your floors. Um, and the only thing I'd see that'd be kind of nice with these, or you can do this yourself, is when you're setting the rake angle of these speakers, put a little mark on those things. So when you've gotten them tightened all the way down, and let's say you turn it a time and a half, you'll know exactly that they're the same on both sides. Uh, but I like that they've done that where, again, you don't have to worry about how sharp the spikes are, and they, they look really good. Uh, these things come in walnut. They come in, what's the other one? Satin white, and they come in a gloss black. And I think these things look great. They don't have any sort of covers or anything. It's kind of, this is a look you like, this is a look you like. Um, speaker grills actually degrade your sound. So if you want better sound, you normally want to take the grills off of them anyways. So um, that's what it comes when it comes to the drivers. These things go down to 31 Hertz, uh, plus or minus three dB. You audio guys know what all that stuff means. 
92 dB sensitive, so you don't need much power to push them. Uh, we did our testing with our Parasound Halo gear, and this is kind of the Halo light, so it's good stuff, but it's not crazy. We also have a standard Yamaha uh, audio video receiver, uh, what's called the, the 2000 series that we tested these with, uh, and it sounded it sounded well. I'll tell you about that during the sound session. Uh, these are uh, four ohm impedance, so you, it, it does help to have a little bit of juice to push them, but you don't need anything crazy there. Uh, bottom ported as opposed to in the back. So I do think that helps with their placement a little bit. Um, so all that stuff is fantastic. That's the technology. Now we'll get into our listening sessions and we'll let you know the content we listened to and how that went. Stay tuned. All right, so now it's time for our listening test and the music that we, uh, you know, sampled. Let you know what we heard. First thing we listened to was Led Zeppelin, and this was Dazed and Confused from uh, the Live at the MSG 1973 version. Normal Dazed and Confused, most of us know it, and I would, it's whatever it is, five minutes, six minutes. This is a 24-minute mastodon marathon mammoth monstrosity. Oh, somebody's coming in the door, that is uh, incredible. And there's a period from, I don't know, four to 10 or 11 minutes that has nothing to do with Dazed and Confused. Um, there's a portion in that where something just really stands out. So kind of from like four minutes to eight minutes and 50 seconds, the drums that kick in right at about, what was the point, 610 and on, sounds like there's a drum in the room. You're getting the presence of that instrument. You're hearing the body of that instrument. And most speakers don't do that. That's kind of our mark of, I think that a good speaker should do something incredibly. It should make you go, wow, I've never heard that, you know, in, in this fashion. And that's what these do with lots of different types of instruments and, and music. Um, that was pretty incredible, really good. Um, next one we listened to was Radiohead's Mixomatosis. And if you don't know Radiohead, a uh, pretty incredible band. They do all sorts of different things with their music. And they also have a lot of just different effects that they throw in. And some, some songs you'll listen to uh, the track and you go, man, there's you know, it's something going on with my system. There's all these you know, little clicks and pops, but it's kind of the way that they, they do their music. Um, typically, the better the speaker, the more of those nuances and clicks and pops wherever you hear with their, with their music. I heard that song probably 500 times, and most of the time it's in my car. These things were a totally different experience. Right off the bat, you've got this big synthesizer, and it's it's right in your face. The thing that really stood out to me with these and Mixomatosis was there's just a huge wall of sound. I mean, it, they just sound like gigantic nine-foot speakers. Uh, that was pretty incredible. So I say yes. That was amazing. Now something a little bit different, Take 5, Dave Brubeck Quartet. If you don't know the name of the track, you listen to it, you go, oh, I've heard that 50 times. Um, these things really show how these speakers uh, can reproduce music and really show their strengths. So right at the start, there's a piano at eight seconds in, and this is kind of like the drum I mentioned earlier. You really hear the body of that piano. It's 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 there. A piano is also very difficult for lots of speakers to reproduce, and this did a great job of it. 
Then at 21 seconds, you've got a saxophone that kicks in. And with the bookshelf speakers, this is where one of our guys just started laughing because the saxophone was dead center where there is no speaker. You know, it's kind of magic. Dead center. Um, and these do really well with like reed or wind instruments. And that whole track, it just sounds accurate. Like you got to, you know, you buy a pair of speakers, you get a free saxophone player. It's a pretty good deal. Um, and then about 30 some seconds in, you just have kind of a whole wall of sound with the different instruments. That sounded really good. Um, I mix it up a little bit. There's a group called ARK, A-R-K. Uh, they're one of the best uh, prog rock bands to ever exist, I think, lots of people think. Uh, not as popular in the US, but they, all of the musicians, so it was just kind of a super group, are just amazingly talented. Um, and then they went away due to egos and whatnot. But um, the way that they play their music, it's really made for these types of speakers with your uh, focus on kind of high-pitched instruments, the guitar, the, the drums, and how accurate the drums are. But so in this song, Resurrection, um, there's a passage from about two minutes and 10 seconds in to about four minutes in that uh, I was on the verge of either crying or fighting a water buffalo because uh, it just gets very emotional. You get all fired up. It's kind of like you go to a live concert. You know, you might have heard your favorite artist on the radio a million times or radio, you know, however you listen to music these days a million times. You go see him in concert, then you start crying and going crazy because it's a different experience. And that's kind of what I heard with these things here. Um, one of the things that you hear with these, and particularly in that album arc, a uh, great vocalist, he's kind of a, has a higher pitched voice, but also screams and yells a bunch. And it's just, it's very live. The drums are very prevalent through all their music. It's incredibly live. So what you hear off of snare drums and off cymbals, uh, it, it sounds amazing. Again, that track, two minutes, 10 seconds, make sure you have a punching bag available or whatever. But um, if you like arc, you will love these speakers. But uh, something a little different than Ark is uh, Old Blue Eyes, uh, Frank Sinatra. We did Fly Me to the Moon, 2008, the remastered version. And these speakers do really well with jazz. I've kind of hit on how they work with horns and that sort of thing and saxophones. Um, one of the things that we like to hear out of that track is if you've got good speakers and they're set up correctly, you hear his vocals just dead center when he starts with that track. These were no exception. These, these did it as well. We noticed that with their bookshelf speakers when we did the review. Um, also at about 38 seconds in, the saxophone that kicks in, it's just, it's, it's like you got a saxophone in the room. Um, two, I'd say slight criticisms of these speakers is, and I noticed this with ARC. ARC, it's, they do sound a little bit hot. So the treble stands out a little bit. Now the treble, it's, it's accurate yet smooth. So another track we did was uh, was Sting, and it's all burn for you. And in that track, this was a live version, 1985, uh, there's sort of these bell synthesizer at the start of the track. And those can sound really sharp with some speakers. These, they, they sounded accurate, yet smooth. Arc is kind of, you know, high pitched and crunchy to sound anyways. So I won't say that they're fatiguing, but they, they do have a little bit of an edge. So, you know, if somebody goes, I have tinnitus, I hate speakers, uh, might not be the best option. Uh, somebody that wants a really flat, neutral sound might not be the best option. However, I think they sound incredible. So that would be just one thing. The other thing is I noticed with um, Frank Sinatra, and this is the case with any big speaker, you want to give them room to breathe. So for example, the setup that you see right now, I actually had to move some things around a little bit to get more of that imaging because where I had it, I'm pretty close to it. So if you're buying big speakers, you know, you don't want to have typically a six foot by seven foot room. You know, you want to have a larger room for those things to breathe. But that was our take in the um, listening content that we ran them through and we think they sound amazing. Uh, in a second here, we will go over final pros and cons and why we think you should buy them or not buy them. All right, so here we are. So what's our conclusion? Conclusion, in my opinion, is that they sound absolutely amazing. They should be on your short lift if you're looking, or short list if you're looking at towers anywhere in that, you know, three to five grand range. These guys sell for 4,500 bucks. The larger ones, the XTF 200s, sell for $5,500. A couple other things to consider as well. Um, actually, I mentioned before they don't have grills. They actually do. They have these little circular guys that go in place here. 
Now, if you're doing home theater, you are going to need a center channel. We just got this guy in, which we're looking forward to doing a uh, review on and checking it out. This is the XTC 100, it's 1500 bucks. This is a matching center channel. Then for rears, you could either go the B100s, which are those bookshelves I was talking about earlier. They have some that are called the MP10s. They sell for about a thousand bucks a pair. They're not exactly voiced to these. They have a slightly different tweeter, but it's subtle and lots of times your software that's built into your AVR processor can handle that. Um, so again, the pros, incredibly accurate, very evoking. I talked about fighting water buffaloes and hitting punching bags and all crying and all that stuff. Um, very detailed uh, and they just reproduce instruments in a way that I feel high-end speakers should because these are you know mid to high-end speakers. Um, only con I would say is that you know for the larger speakers having them in a bigger room is going to allow them to perform better where you can set them up properly and get better imaging and then they run a little bit hot on the treble so uh again just something to be aware of it's not a problem for me i think they sound incredible i'd have no problem buying these for myself um what else anything else we should consider with these guys not really i we appreciate you stopping by we'll be doing a review shortly on the c100 and some other our new toys and if we can ever help out if you're in the san diego area just let us know Thanks again. Have a great day.